What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We're in Jacksonville, Florida with some new awesome friends that I just recently met and they invited me up here to run way offshore and catch or in hopes of catching giant wahoo on this really nice 32 foot invincible. I'm filming now because tomorrow morning in the dark we're getting on this boat and we're running almost 100 miles offshore of Jacksonville, Florida in search of giant wahoo, vermilion snapper, and triggerfish. Y'all don't go anywhere. This is gonna get real, real soon. All right, y'all, we made it. We're 85 miles offshore, off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. We came out of the Mayport Inlet. It's pretty rough, actually. It's bumpy, wind's blowing probably about 15 out of the north. We're gonna be high-speed wahoo trolling. I'm gonna try my best to show you the whole process. Put out big weights, long leaders, big lures, troll pretty fast. And when these wahoo hit, it is crazy hard y'all don't go nowhere because i'm gonna put this camera down pick the gopros up set everything up and hopefully when you see me again that rod's just digging look y'all this is the owner of the boat i'm the owner of the boat right here <laughs> he, just, he just went away from you to film him y'all he's hooked up oh, i'm gonna introduce everybody in just a minute but we're just now getting acclimated we're trying to fill the box are you gonna let that fish whoop you no don't step on your oh, skirt i'm bringing it in here it comes, getting close. Trophy Gotta trigger. Tri you got a uh, trigger, trigger and a You want this? Oh, bar jack. Bar jack. Gotta get him in the boat. Hey, hey, but watch this, but watch this. <laughs> Y'all, I got Moby Dick on here. A little head shake on it, huh? Some head shake, so you know it's not a snapper. We got big old trigger fish. Now, this joker, take his hide off of him and cook him on that trigger grill. Woo! You ever seen? Oh, yeah, Robert, Robert showed him on my last video. I had no oh, idea. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? That's Push why they call him a trigger. Nothing. Push back that little one. Push right down. Got a trigger fish. A nice bee liner. All right, y'all. We have stopped wahoo fishing for a minute. The bite, the major feed's right in the middle of the day. So we're going to catch some bottom fish just to make sure we got some dinner. Show us what you're working with, Captain Bo. Hey, man, we got some three-way swivels, some Seaworks three-way swivels, some Seaworks fluorocarbon, 60-pound. I'm making a double rig real quick to try to get on some more of these bee liners and trigger fish. And uh, they're biting decent. We got, I don't know, a half dozen in the box, a few nice bee liners. We're going to pound on these guys for a little bit, try to put some meat in the boat, get back to what you got there. Uh, uh, decent, decent trigger swing fish. Swing him over here and let me see that big bad boy. Now look at that big old gray trigger. Now Jacksonville's known for these triggers, aren't they? Absolutely. If they get wide open, man, we might, we might come across the bite work. You're double and triple heading them just about every time. Over the shoulder advice. Hmm. You're Keep your line quiet. tight. You've been catching fish but not talking. That's right, man. That's how you do it. Actions speak louder than words. What you gotta do is you gotta set the hook before the fish. Even yeah. <laughs> and if you guys watched our shrimping video up on the St. John's River in Jacksonville, yeah. That's him. That's Redneck fishing, baby. Redneck fishing. Yeah. Check that out. Look at that big boy. Big queen trigger fish. Yeah, okay, thanks for sitting down your rod, buddy. Oh, you done? What? <laughs> <laughs> Snooze you lose, Bubba. Y'all, we didn't get it in film, but we just had like at least a 14 foot tiger shark come up and crush a remora right on the side of the boat. Nuts. Insane, and we were trying to chum him back up to get some underwater footage of him, and Captain Bo ganked my rod. All right, y'all, so this chicken rig is this easy. You put three baits on and drop it down. Always hold your thumb on the spool. Let it go wide open, but keep your thumb on it just acting like a break. Because when it hits the bottom, if your thumb's not on the right, you'll get a backlash. This is about the easiest way to snapper fish and the most productive. How deep are we? 162 feet of water right now. Dang. Imagine if you were down there diving and that tiger shark swam up to you and just bit you in the leg. I could imagine even if he didn't, probably be having some strength marks. Aubrey, my other brother, was diving last week in Jupiter and had one swim up to him. That's like a trigger fish. Woo! I don't know. There he is. Hooked up. 
I'll get him, Bubba. Double duck. I don't want the tiger shark eating. Come up that tiger. I probably got the fish of the day here. He's fighting real hard. Yeah. I can tell y'all one thing that trigger fish is about as good as any fish that swims in the ocean to eat. So I'm definitely not upset that we're catching them. We'll take that. But look at that bee liner, AKA Vermilion snapper that just fell off. Fell off the hook, landed on the deck. Joe, are you gonna drink that beer or catch that big fish? Yes. Yes on which one? Yes. Yes and yes. So I get a lot of people making comments about beer and whatnot and what do we drink. I don't personally drink beer. Do I care if people drink beer around me? Absolutely not. We're all grown adults and these guys work every day of the oh, Whoa! Yeah, another man. one! Look at that big thing! So back to what I was saying, absolutely I do not care about them drinking what beer. They're on vacation. They were nice enough to bring Look me along. Out. So they're drinking some Miller Lite. Oh, man, that is a pretty one right there. Are you Gorgeous. <whistles> What's your YouTube channel? Joe VT Fishing. You gotta slow down. Some people are trying to hear that. Say it again. Joe VT Fishing. Joe VT Fishing. Correct. Joe Bone Throw. We got some epic videos of the uh, 36 hour trips we do on the Mayport Princess and uh, a bunch of commercial fishing trips with Jonathan Moran as well. Pretty epic. And I got some stuff from California of us catching big yellowfin and uh, dodging a bunch of great white sharks while doing it at Guadalupe Island, so. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's coming up. We yeah. got left for a short break, and old, old Gabe got him one on. Whatever it is, pretty strong. Good thing you're strong too. Goodness. <laughs> it's in the rock. Oh, we're keep trying. going, keep going, you got him. Got him. Go get him. <laughs> oh man. Jaws. El Chupacabra. <laughs> Doing a good job making it look hard. He's <laughs> <laughs> got some back. Jaws. Big sandbar. Come here. Come here, big fins. This chucker pulling. <laughs> you got him. I think it's a shark. What do you have down for bait, Gabe? Huh? You got a chunk bait down? You got a strip? I don't know, it ain't, it ain't fighting like a shark now. Black belly. Could be. Bring up the big old black belly yeah, group. Weird stuff happened. It's way up at the bottom, I know that. Well, it's not playing it out yet, so that's a good sign. Goodness. Well, you're testing out the floor carbon. Yeah. It's only 60 pound. You got 60 pound on there? No way. That's a shark. Okay. Sure? No, it's a sandbar. No, wait. You got him. Come on. You got him, baby. Ah! Yeah, dude. Why are that joker in? World oh. record nurse shark. Woo! 12 footer. Ooh, 12 that's Mondo. Footer. That's, not, that's not an exaggeration. That might be a it's world record right there. there. Whatever. Oh, no, it's a, yeah, a, a nurse shark. They all gummy shark. Grab the uh, you want to cut uh, them off and pop them when they're good. Cut it. Uh, cut uh, them off. Cut her, cut her. That floor carbon is pretty tough. That's only 60 pounds. Oh, yeah. Got it. Nope. Adios. All right, buddy. Woo. Hang on. Hang on. One workout? Just like that. Yes, yeah. sir. Now we get a point anchor. Woohoo! All that for nada. What you got, Cap? Come on, give us some. Give us some. Uh oh. It's big, whatever it is, y'all. Big flounder. Big flounder. 
Halibut J. When I was in the West Coast, I had to switch it up to halibut. <laughs> Big halibut. Big halibut. Oh. Come on, all eyes are on you right now. Take that rod tip up, let's see what, how hard it's been. Watch you bending. He's on that efficient game. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't like fighting him with my back either. Shit, damn. That's the Jotham brand special. Absolutely. Let me tell you how hot this engine kelling is. I just sat down. <laughs> well, if you're away, it does dry like out. But burn. <laughs> What y'all think it is? There it is, some big amberjack. It's floating up like a snapper. Get the cap, get the cap! Oh. Big mutton! Oh. Big, big mutton! Woo! Yeah. Oh, big one! How about that one, huh? Joe. I bet y'all weren't yeah. expecting that big member. Come on! Good job, buddy. And nice yeah. fish. Northeast My Florida tongue! Mine. Hold him up here one more time. What y'all think he's gonna taste like on the grill? Oh he gonna goodness. taste real good Look, on that here's grill. Here's the most yeah. important thing. Look how pretty that bamboo gaff is. <laughs> We're gonna talk more about that later. Oh yeah. Oh, that, you're really Thank showing you. up here big right yeah, now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Huge All right. mug. All right, y'all. We've been high speed trolling for the last two hours trying to get a big wahoo. These boys are in a tournament and we're trying our hardest, but we had to take a break and get some more meat for the grill. Oh, this feels like an amberjack or something. A little bite to it. it That's another blue runner we're picking up right now. Let's be looking Bob. Hey, Jay. How do I know? How about that? Jack. The big alvoca? Oh, dude, we're trolling right now. There you go. Bro, we need to start. We need to troll thing? in a little bit. What do we got here? Drop him in. Oh, I'm mad. Don't do that. Alvoca, Jack. No, no, no. All right, y'all. Not a mutton, but in a little amberjack. We're not keeping him. We're going to drop a couple more times, and we're getting right back to Wahoo trolling. Mm -hmm. Just felt like teasing y'all a little bit. <laughs> Look at these lures. That thing weighs five pounds and we troll at 18 miles an hour. We're here to catch giant wahoo. It's a full moon today, so we know that that right at dark bite is super important. So we're going to put all this bottom stuff away, put the trolling rods back out, and get to fishing. And it's going to be do or die. If we don't catch a wahoo, the next time y'all see me, we'll be back at the dock at Mr. Ken's house and we're going to bust out a good meal of some sort. I don't know which one of them fish we're cooking, but one of them is going to get cooked and it's going to be good. How good? Real, Real good. y'all the sun just set we fished from daylight to almost dark tournament rules or once the sun sets lines in this is life we fished for 12 hours for wahoo and never even had a bite but you cannot catch them sitting on the couch i can guarantee you that all right you guys i'm out here getting the scales off this giant mutton before i go in my kitchen i wasn't going to show you all this because it's just messy and all y'all know how to scale a fish but i went to gut it and I felt something big. Now you can see I haven't done anything other than cut the initial slit. Look at what's in this thing's belly though. We might possibly get two catch cleaning cooks out of one fish. Let me cut its stomach just a little bit more because I'd already cut it a little bit. Look at this. 
Look at that. A huge grunt that's been bit in half. Now, if I was a little bit more hungry than I am, we could probably clean and cook that. But I don't think we're going to. And that's all that was in there. One big grunt. But look at that. That's as big as my hand. Heck, that's seven inches. Six, seven inches of grunt in this big fish's belly. Bam! Look how big that mutton is. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But Danko Pliers came up with a giveaway, and I wanted to put it right here in this part of the video so I got all of y'all's attention. They're going to give away five sets of these kits. They're a $50 value, all of them have lifetime warranties, and they come with this awesome bag. So you get the five, the seven, and the nine inch flay, all for simply going to their Instagram, liking it, going to my Instagram and liking it. But the part that you have to do is go to Danko's Instagram, find the thumbnail to this video, and comment Blue Gabe on it. That's all you gotta do. They're gonna go to that photo, go down through all the names, randomly select five people. That's all you gotta do to win. Now let's get to this mutton. So I'm gonna do something different in this video. I got my Traeger grill fired up. I'm only gonna cook a little section of this in this video, but I'm gonna do a dish you've never seen even close to on this channel. Then I'm gonna take the rest and put it in this pot and I'm gonna smoke it at a low temp for hours until all that meat just falls off the bone and then I'm gonna experiment with it and use it on another video if it works out right. But for right now, let's hack it up. So right there is where you saw this gaff it. I'm gonna come in. Now I'm not really worried this time about getting all the meat because I'm gonna use this whole carcass. So just like every other fish you see us clean, come right down the backbone, right out the tail, just like so. Then start peeling it up. Come over those pin bones, just like that. I'm gonna cook the ribs. I'm cooking this whole entire fish, but look how beautiful that is. I took the scales off because I'm going to smoke one of the flays and I want the skin on. I'm going to actually remove the skin from the part we're going to cook tonight. So we'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to, I got some fresh green beans to steam for the boys and for us, but the boys really enjoy steamed green beans. And these can cookers do an awesome job. Literally all you got to do is put the lid on and walk away. In this can cooker, I have the pasta that's going to go along with the dish that I'm going to cook tonight. But right now, I got the grill turned on. This is what I'm going to do with the rest. I got the throats and the head. So I'm just going to hit them with some garlic salt. Nothing too crazy. About like that. A little bit on the head. Because I'm going to make something completely crazy out of that. Right now, let's go put it on the Traeger grill. So I got it on 200 degrees, heavy smoke. I'm going to shut the lid and that's the last time y'all are going to see it. The next time you see me do a dish like this, I will have perfected it and I'll show you the whole process. All right, so now it's time to talk about the dish we're cooking tonight. We're doing a pasta style dish with a vodka sauce, all kinds of goodies. But let's take it one step at a time. So I like to leave just a little bit of meat on the flay so my fingers can hold it. And then I just simply push and pull just like that. Bam! Frank loves this part of the video because he knows he's going to get him a little niblet. Come here, let's feed, let's feed Frank real quick. Let's see if he'll explode. I fed him a ton of deer meat last night. But let's see if Get back, Jack. This ain't yours. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. He's sensing it. He's sensing it. Sometimes he takes a little while, though. I fed him a bunch yesterday. So I filled him up with deer meat yesterday. But don't worry about it. We videoed it, and that's the very next video. The video after this is an awesome video with him and that Jack. And trust me, you're going to want to see it. So this is all I'm going to do right now. Just take this bloodline out. And I'm going to cook this shoulder piece just that much. That's all I'm going to cook. 
And for those of y'all that question me on fish don't have shoulders, guess what? I know that, but we call it a shoulder. I'm just gonna lay it right in here, just like that. Now you think, oh, he's pan frying another fish. That's all he ever does. Wrong. I'm not just pan frying it. Trust me. Trust me. A little bit of pepper. Where's my garlic salt? I grew up on Lowry's garlic salt. Just like that. And we're going to just let that cook for just a minute. Because we're going to take this right here. On. We're going to take this can cooker. We're going to come over here without burning myself. Strain that. Put this back in there, and yep, I spilled some. That's all right. That's all right. That there. Then I got some creamy vodka sauce. Not the vodka that you're thinking either. Pour it in there just about like that. Take number two. Pour it in there just about like that. And we'll be right back for the next step. All right. Here's the next step. So I took some of these baby portobello mushrooms right here and just slightly sauteed them while the fish was cooking. So I'm going to add them on in a minute. Look at that though. All I did was sort of drown the fish because here comes the next part. <laughs> oh yeah. Y'all don't even know. So now that this is all on there, Looking all fine and dandy. Just about like that. Take these mushrooms, put them on top just like that. Now that was hot. Now, yep, that's hot too. Now I'm going to plop it in the oven for about, I don't know, 15 minutes at 325 convection bake. So let me set my timer. I'm going to set it for 20 and I know to check it. So the green beans are ready. You see that can cooker steaming? I don't even have to wonder. I know they're done. Turn the heat off and we'll be ready to eat soon. Y'all don't go anywhere because there's more that I'm going to do to that still. And it's going to be oh so good. Rico, you want this piece of fish to take home? Yeah, definitely. Oh, Rico's behind the camera. He's back, y'all. He had separation anxiety while I was gone for a week, but he's back. He's back. That's that's a nice meal in itself right there, and I still got a whole entire another filet push, everything that's on the trigger. Win-win. We'll see y'all in a minute. All right, I forgot about the questions, but don't think I don't have them. I screenshotted each one that I want to answer, but bear with me because I'm telling you, I'm not very good at reading crazy names. So the first one we got is Davida Sare, and we're going to put it on the screen. We're going to take this picture and put it right there on the screen, so you'll see that. What would be your dream fishing destination at this point in your YouTube career and why? Australia, hands down, bar none. There's not even anything that comes close to it, period. Australia, and I will be there soon because I have a YouTuber that we're all close with. If you watch Deer Meat for Dinner, you saw him on that channel. I'm not even gonna say his name just yet because I wanna surprise y'all because that trip's not very far away. Next question, and it almost goes with the first question, that's why I used it. Joanne Tatum, what's the one animal or fish you haven't hunted or caught that you would want to? Barramundi. There's a place you can catch them here called Osceola Outback. That place is amazing. If y'all haven't heard about it, look it up. I just don't want my first one to be there because I want it to be where they come from and that's Australia. Barramundi, hands down, top water, I can see it right now as clear as day. Australia is where I want to go and Bear Monday is what I want to catch, hands down. Let's get to the third one. Okay, Ryan Williams. In Georgia where I live, the water's not clear like in Florida. How do you find fish areas that you're not familiar with like when you're just starting out or what are you looking for? So that's a good question because I pride myself in going places that I've never been and even before YouTube. I would just strike out. I have two different boats. I've got a little duck boat that can go shallow or I have my bigger bay boat where I can go deeper or out into the ocean and I, I really enjoy going places that I've never been. So if you do go somewhere you've never been, the first thing you need to do is talk to locals. Go to a bait shop. 
don't walk in there and sound like a kook and act crazy. Just say, sir, you know, hey, I'm from out of town. I would really like some, you know, local knowledge. What baits do you sell the most out of? That's number one. Number two is when you get out on the water, look for birds diving, or if you're in fresh water, look for grass and clear water. Bait is, the, if there's not bait, there's not gonna be fish. Another thing is current breaks or current rips or good looking docks. Just be aware of your surrounding. And number three, Google it, look on YouTube. No matter where you wanna go in the world, there is a YouTube video for that specific location. I'd be willing to bet. So hopefully I answered that for you. Thanks for asking. We're gonna do one more. One more. I'm doing better at this than I thought I would. Chris S. Question. What inspired you to become a YouTuber and why? Out of everything you could have done or did. Dear Meat for Dinner, Robert Arrington, AKA my brother. When he started YouTube, YouTube wasn't cool. We all thought he was crazy and never even paid it one bit of attention. Well, guess what? We are now because Robert showed the world that you can do it. Now, is it easy? Nope. He made me do it on my own for quite some time. He helped me build my Instagram up to a pretty good point. But when I started YouTube, he sort of kicked me out of the nest. And at first I was sort of aggravated about it. But you know what? Then as I got going, I'm like, God, I got, I got to be proud of him for that. Because if you just give somebody something, it doesn't mean anything. He made me work at it hard. He gave me baby steps at editing, and even before Rico or anybody else helped me, I started learning. And I have zero, zero computer skills. Zero. I just knew if I want to pay my bills and I want to have food for my kids and clothes, I better get to figuring it out. So, bar none, Robert Arrington, Deer Meat for Dinner, 100% was my inspiration for YouTube. There is no, that's not me tooting his horn, that's not me trying to brag on my brother, that is it. That's it, plain and simple. So, last question. I'm going to answer five or six more questions in the next video, which will be out in just a couple days, so y'all stay tuned. I already got them in my phone, but I don't want to choke this whole video up with it right now because I forgot to do it earlier. Good thing is, y'all watch all my videos. So the next video, I'll probably go ahead and answer a bunch more than just that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Timer's going off. Time to pull it out and add the next step. Mm. Let me tell y'all something. You could do this with tilapia from Publix, which I wouldn't recommend, because before I bought tilapia at Publix, I'd probably go catch a mudfish out of a ditch. But if that's what you like, because there's really nothing wrong with it, you could do this dish with anything. So I'm taking some Mexican four cheese blend. Like that. And then my favorite, mozzarella. Redneck, how come you always decide to eat while I'm filming? Is, is, is my, does my cooking make you hungry? It's because you can smell it. He can, see, y'all can't smell it, but Redneck can. So I'm gonna put it back in there until the cheese is melted. And then once the cheese is melted, I'm gonna put it on broil for about a minute, just to try to give a little bit of a brown crisp to that cheese. So. While I'm doing that, let me show y'all something new here. Look at this. New and improved Blue Gabe merch. New logo on the front. New logos on the back, y'all. Hold on, I got one more. All this is on bluegabe.com, which is also opagear.com, which is a good friend of mine, Derek Sims. Old Nick Stanzik first told me, caught, not bought. Look at that. Got an awesome lobster, but this you saw in the video. I'm gonna tell y'all something crazy about Google. When I got on their boat, Mr. Ken, the owner of that bad Invincible, and Bo, the captain who owns Offshore Outlaws and his partners with Mr. Ken in this business right here, they had this gaff, and I eyeballed it. I'm like, that's the most beautiful gaff I've ever seen in my life. I've never Googled this gaff. I've never talked on the phone about this gaff. I've never even talked to anybody about this gaff. I get home and open up Instagram and a company that's selling a knockoff version of this gaff but looked a lot like it, not with as good of detail, was on my Instagram. I've never seen it before. They're listening, people. They're listening. I promise to you. But anyhow, all seriousness, they're listening. 
<laughs> but the Mr. Ken and Bo, how I met them, they're coming up with this company. Well, they already have came up with this company called Seaworks. They're making fluorocarbon leader that's affordable. They're cut out the middleman that makes money for doing nothing. And they're selling this to local tackle shops. They're from Jacksonville down to Miami right now, and they're getting bigger by the day. Y'all check out Seaworks HP leader line. It's 100% fluorocarbon. And when you saw me catch that nurse shark, I literally winched it off the bottom with 60 pound test. The big mutton was caught on 60 pound test. That's no sales pitch. These guys are just new friends of mine. And just like they share my YouTube videos, I'm sharing their business. Not trying to sell y'all something, I'm just telling you how we met. The reason we met, and it's an awesome product. I never said a word about it until I used it. And when I jerked a, whatever, 200 plus pound Jewfish off the bottom in 167 foot of water, y'all watched me pulling as hard as I could with 60 pound fluoro. I'm gonna tell y'all about it. Y'all watch this. Watch this, watch this. Now, I used to cook this dish years ago. And I'm telling you, every time I do it, I do it a little bit different. Come in here. But can y'all, but can y'all smell it? Woo! Doggy! Let me, let me just fix me and Rico up a plate. Probably need this knife to cut it so it cuts through that cheek. Mmm. Rico, can you smell it? Mm -hmm. I've actually got more in here cooking that I'm doing a little bit different than I did this. Just to always, you can never learn too much with cooking. Everybody asks, how'd you learn how to cook? Well, that's how I did it. No, bake, start. I would just try things. I mean, I can't say it enough. I walk through the grocery store and I just try things and that's how it becomes. This is gonna be messy with this cheese, but... Oh, doggy. Oh, doggy. Y'all tell me right now, leave a thumbs up if y'all like this. It's different, it's unique, and I guarantee you I don't even have to guess. It's going to be good. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I'm going to answer one more question because y'all already know that's going to be super hot. And it's an important one because even Rico commented on the video and asked me. Yeah, Rico watches the videos too. Don't think he don't. He's been up there. He's up there checking out. All right, Kelly Simmons asks, where did you get the name Blue Gabe? That's probably the most common question, bar none. About 15 to 18 years ago, I was in Tom Hansen's living room in Jupiter, Florida, and Ian Cannonbrew was helping me set up an email address. I don't know, maybe it was 12 years ago. It was a long time ago. And we needed to come up with a name, and I'm like, I don't know. And I had a deer dog named Blue. That was one of the most amazing dogs I've ever seen, period. He could blood trail a deer with no blood, 24 hour old track. I'm sure some of you guys that hunt dogs are like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Trust me, there's hundreds of times over about an eight year period that that dog could take a 24 hour old track, no blood and go with it and would take you to the deer or show you the deer alive every time. His name was Blue, so I'm in the living room. I'm like, I don't know, Blue Gabe. Bam, that's where it came from. And when I started doing YouTube, you know, as I was wanting to come up with a name, I didn't want something that was really judgmental. I didn't want to say, oh, outdoors something or Mike and TK, something like that. I just said Blue Gabe. That way, anybody would want to watch it. It's not a judgmental name. It doesn't have to do with hunting or fishing or anything. It's just a name. And it stuck with Blue Gabe. That's all it is. Sorry if I let y'all down. Y'all figured it was something exciting. That's what it is. Blue Gabe, an old email address. Come roll, please. Let's see. Look at that. The cheese is going to be all up on your chin. Oh my gosh. I'm That's, telling you, that is good. That's amazing. <clears throat> you going in for another bite, Oh, huh? yeah. No, I'll do two. 
You didn't maybe not taste it that good the first time? No, nope. I gotta make sure I gotta give a second opinion. Redneck's like, yo, drop a piece. I got you. Mm. Redneck, you wanna see how it is? Here. He's like, oh, thank you very much. He approves. Here's the coolest thing about that recipe. I use maybe eight dollars of an ingredient. So I use these little green wives pastas. A little bit of this premium creamy vodka sauce and two types of cheeses. That's it. Like eight bucks. The fish, that's another thing. That's another thing. We trolled and so when we left Mr. Ken's dock to when we got back to Mr. Ken's dock, we traveled 292 miles. We trolled for I think almost nine hours. We only bottom fished all that fishing y'all saw. We only did that for like maybe an hour and a half throughout the whole day. We did it in two different increments. That's right, we went 292 miles and never had a bite. So if you calculate the gas that we have into that snapper, oh boy, but the ingredients it took to cook with it, not even eight bucks. Let me see up in here. I'm a big fan of mushrooms, so you know I'm gonna get up in that mushroom. Mm. How hot was it? Not too bad. Feels pretty hot. Look at that. <laughs> Man. Y'all cannot beat that. You could do that recipe with chicken, pork. I probably wouldn't recommend doing it with deer meat, but any kind of fish, highly recommended. Big shout out Captain Bo, John, Andrew, Mr. Ken for taking me on that amazing trip. I look forward to using all of y'all's line, your leader line. Bo has a company on Instagram that's Offshore Outlaws. Their hats, awesome shirts. Y'all, I just like supporting people like people support me. Everybody shares my stuff. Danko's doing a giveaway to help me. Favorite rods, these glasses right here. I'm gonna be giving these away in an not the next video, but in about two more videos, I'm giving these away. And you're not going to have to do much. Nothing crazy. Favorite Rods is going to give away some rods. Danko's going to give away a bunch more stuff. Can Cooker's going to give away some stuff. And it's all companies supporting me, and I support them. People helping me. Andrew, all those boys. Big shout out to all y'all. I love each and every one of you. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the support and all the positive comments. But like Jake always says, we got to get out of here. And it's time to get the heck out of shape. See y'all.